Smart Device Foundations. This video is an overview of Smart Device Foundations and is designed for people who are new to smart devices like smartphones or tablets. This video is filmed on an Apple iPad, but the concepts are valuable for any device such as an iPad, an iPhone, and the general concepts are still great for Android devices as well. This is an Apple iPad 9th generation. To turn the device on, you're going to utilize the power or lock button located on the top right of the device. To turn the device on, you can locate the power button or lock button located on the top right of the device. This button is a physical button and requires a small amount of pressure to activate. To power the device on, push and hold the lock button until you hear a small click. Then wait until the apple appears on screen. After the apple appears, wait. The iPad is starting up. This is the home screen. The items that you can see on the home screen are called apps. On the bottom of the home screen is a home button. This is another tactile button that requires a small amount of pressure. Newer iPads like the iPad Air or iPad Pros do not have a home button. The home button, when pressed, brings you to your home screen. Underneath the home button is the location of the charging port. This charging port is where you will place the Apple-provided charging cable. This cable is called a lightning cable. It is the same on both sides and can be placed in the charging port in any direction. Apply a small amount of pressure to ensure the charging cable is all the way in the charging port. These holes next to the charging port are your Apple iPad's speakers. The other side of your Apple provided charging cable can be placed into any outlet in a wall. When your device is successfully charging, it will make a noise. You can confirm that your device is still connected to power by viewing the little lightning bolt in the battery icon on the top right of the screen. To power off your Apple iPad, push and hold the power button located on the top right of the device. After you push and hold the power button for two to three seconds, the touchscreen will change. Slide this icon to power off. The same button that you use to power on and off the device also functions as the lock button. On a single press of the lock button, the device will lock. This is the lock screen. It displays the time and allows for those who are security conscious to add a passcode to unlock the iPad. When an iPad is not secured by the passcode, one press of the home button and then a second press of the home button will always take you back to the home screen. The home button can be pressed with either a finger or a stylus. The remaining physical buttons on the iPad are the volume buttons located on the top right of the device. These two buttons turn the volume up and down. When we turn the volume up, you can see the indicator on the top of the screen, turning the volume down, turning the volume up. Each icon on the home screen 
is called an app. These icons are for applications that do a single function. For example, the Maps app gives you the map of your surrounding area or any area in the world. This app can provide directions to where you'd like to go, driving, walking, bus, or taxi. You can find new apps on the App Store. If you can think it, there's an app for that. Open your App Store, press search, and look for the app in question. To add an app to your iPad, open the App Store and search. To download an app, press the Get button. If the Get button next to the app says Get, then the app is free. If the app is not free, it will always display a price tag. Once you press the Get button, you will need to press the Install button and enter your Apple password. Apple iPads and smartphones are touchscreen devices. The touchscreen of the Apple iPad extends all the way around, but not all the way to the edge on the ninth generation. On the iPad Pro and the iPad Air, the touchscreen extends to the edge. To utilize a touchscreen, you can use your finger or a stylus like this to interact with the touchscreen. You do not need to apply pressure to interact with the touchscreen. A gentle movement of your finger or stylus will allow you to interact with the touchscreen. This action is called swiping. Imagine the pages of a book. If you want to move to the left of the book, you will pull the page from the left to the right side. This is called swiping left. I know it sounds a little backwards because you're moving to the right, but that action is called swiping left. The opposite is true for the other way. This action is called swiping right. You can also swipe up and down to interact with other items like web pages or articles that have a long amount of text that you can scroll through. When you tap on an item, again, you don't need much pressure. When you tap on an item, you will interact with it. When you open an app, you can always get back to the home page by pressing the home button. As a reminder, this home button does require a small amount of pressure to interact with, unlike the touch screen, which only requires a gentle touch. To open an app, tap once on the app. If you want to zoom in on an item, you can utilize a gesture we call pinch. You can use two fingers, your forefinger and thumb, or two separate fingers if you have trouble with this motion, to zoom in on an item. Utilizing your two fingers, you can pinch or expand your fingers to zoom in and out. Some people may find they accidentally hold too long when they're interacting with an app or the screen. If you push and hold on an app, a secondary menu will appear. If you open this by accident, you can escape it by pressing or tapping in the empty space around it, or by pushing the home button. On your home screen, on the bottom, there is a section called the dock. No matter what page of your home screen you are on, this dock will always be visible. If you have multiple home screens, 
like this, with apps on your first and second home screen, the apps in your dock will remain visible all the time. Put your most important or most used apps into the dock. To move an app, push and hold on an empty portion of the home screen. You will enter what I like to call jiggle mode. When your apps are jiggling, you can pick them up and move them around. To move them to your second home screen, bring them to the edge, but not too far. And place them where you'd like them to go. If you drag your apps too far to the edge, you will drop them. On an Apple device, you can access a tool called your Control Center from the top right of the screen. Your best bet is to aim for the battery icon and then pull down. This is your control center. Here, you can access volume controls, brightness controls, accessibility settings, airplane mode, and so much more. You can exit control center by tapping in the excess space around it. When your iPad is in jiggle mode, you can also delete apps. If you'd like to delete an app or remove it from your home screen, press the small minus icon on the top left. From this icon, you can select the option to delete the app or remove it from the home screen. If you remove the app from the home screen, it will stay on your iPad located in the app library. To find the app library, scroll all the way to the right. All of the apps located on your iPad are automatically categorized. If you'd like to organize your apps into folders, enter jiggle mode and pick up your app and overlay it with another. Together, they make a folder. This folder can be opened and interacted with. To switch between two apps quickly, you can double push on your home button with either your stylus or your finger. You'll need to double push it quickly in order to open the app switcher. From here, you can see all your recently opened apps. You can switch between apps or utilize the app switcher to quit apps. If an app is experiencing issues or isn't behaving correctly, my first recommendation is to quit the app. Open the app switcher by double clicking on the home button and drag that app to the top of the screen. Once the app is quit, you can always open it again. You are not deleting the app this way, just giving it a little rest. If you continue to have issues with an app or your device, restart your iPad utilizing the lock slash power button. If you are having trouble connecting to the internet, please view our other video in our tech literacy video series that covers internet connection. If you find that you have trouble utilizing a touchscreen with your finger, you can try a stylus. A stylus is a pen-like tool with a fiber or plastic tip that allows you to interact with the touchscreen. This item can swipe and tap and hold and pinch just like a finger can. Some people who have trouble interacting with the touchscreen may find it is easier to use this tool. A stylus can be purchased at any major retailer like Walmart, Target, Amazon, etc. If you want to utilize your device for listening to music or for video calling, you can plug in wired headphones in the port on the top left of the device. To place the cable in, Apply pressure 
until it's all the way inserted. As a reminder, this is an iPad 9th generation. Not every iPad or iPhone has a physical headphone port. For those devices without a headphone port, please utilize Bluetooth headphones. <laughs>